Okay, we've got the fabric on the top surface of the wing has been glued down all around the perimeters. So we're ready to do the initial shrink. And you can see by doing the blanket method here, we don't have a lot of slack. It's not tight, but there's not a lot of puckers and wrinkles. You're going to find if you use an envelope, generally you're going to have a lot more slack in the fabric than this. So we're going to start again. We've got the tank base. We're going to treat this as actually the end of the wing right here. We'll come down about centered, and we've got our iron set for about 250 for the first shrink. We start over the rib. The rib is a pretty effective heat sink, so it takes a little, little longer to let the heat penetrate through the fabric to get that initial shrink started. Again, like we said on the bottom, it's preferable to do the initial shrink over the ribs. And you're going to find if you do that, if you start in the open base here, you generally will have a little more sag between the ribs. So go ahead and do the initial shrink over the ribs themselves. Then we'll come back and catch between the rib bays. After this shrink is done, then we'll start turning the iron up and we'll go through our second two stages, the 300 and the 350. Before we do that, we get to 250 here, We'll go ahead and do our cutout for the aileron cable and put our, our uh, cable exit fair uh, lead on that the way we did on the bottom. And again, we just kind of stagger through here, keep the shrink going as even as we can. If this is actually a, this had been an envelope, or a blanket where it was wrapped around the leading edge and glued strictly at the trailing edge. And to get a real even shrink, what you'd have to do is preferably have two people, one on each side, and you are doing the same bays at the same time, opposite of each other. If you're doing it by yourself, you need to do a portion of a bay and then go to the other side of the wing <coughs> and shrink Again, so you can try to keep as even a shrink going as you can. <laughs> if you do one side by itself, it's going to tend to pull around the leading edge, and then you're going to be pulling all that fabric in one direction again. So, if you do an envelope, and like I say, you want to pay attention to how this is shrunk so you get a nice even shrink, and you're going to have to work back and forth from one side to the other to get that. Okay, it's all pretty well been covered now. 250 degrees. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'll go ahead and just give this one more ironing at the 250. I'm just going to kind of go up 90 degrees across here and just make sure everything's been caught. And then we'll come back and we'll crank the iron up to the 300. And what we'll do is just pretty much repeat what we've done here. Okay, when I uncovered these wings, I went ahead and cut the old fabric panels out. This is one I've marked it right top. This is the right wing. And I cut it flush to the rear of the trailing edge. And you can see where the ribs, where these original ribs actually laid in here. So what that does, it gives me a good area here to go ahead and mark for the cutout for that aileron cable. So it worked first time around, this should get us really close. Also, if you have access to the Short Wing Piper Club, if you're a member of that by any chance, uh, there's a CD on that, and it has the Colt and all the different Piper series. You can bring up the wing structure with the cover, and they show the exact measurements. This is actually about a half inch offset on the top to the inboard. The bottom is a half inch offset to the, to the outboard <coughs> and the measurements in. So all that stuff is actually available on Piper drawings. But if you take the old ones and you just double check the run of the cable, if they look good to you, <coughs> go ahead and cut these fabric panels out and save them. Another area where this works real good if you're doing a fuselage, cut the aft panel out where the where the uh, rudder cable comes out, and when you get it covered, you can put that right back up on place on the side of the fuselage, reach through and mark your fabric. It makes it real easy to uh, find the exit point for your rudder cables too.
Okay. Now, we are really living right. This cable is uh, right here. I get my got a piece of safety wire hooked into it. And look at that. And it just doesn't get much better than that. You got the cable pulled up through here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and put the aileron on <coughs> so we can hook this into the horn and then we can get our exact light. Okay, we've got our cables hooked up, the ailerons on here. And you can see that's rubbing the fabric here a little bit. And like we said before, if you leave it like that, you're going to wear your cable out. It's amazing, but the friction of this cable running will actually wear the cable before it'll wear through this Dacron. So we're going to take our little razor knife here. We're going to just enlarge this opening a little bit. Main thing we want to do is get this to where the cable is completely free from any fabric rub. And that's another nice thing with our aluminum cover plate. We can open this hole up as required and we're, we'll be able to completely cover it up. Okay, we've brushed a little glue around our hole. You can see here, as soon as that dries completely, we'll pull this back out of the way and finish the trim on that. While we're letting that glue dry, we went ahead and we've made another cover plate like we did on the bottom side. You can see that fits over there, covers all that up very nicely. Put some glue on here and let it dry. And then again, we'll put our cover patch over the top. While that's drying, <coughs> then we'll go ahead and remove the aileron and start going to the final shrink on the bottom side of the wing. Okay, we've got the bottom surface up. We've left the aileron in place. We've got our glue drying on this piece on the other side. So rather than disturb, we're going to leave things alone. We're going to start our second shrink here in the bottom. The iron's been cranked up now to 300 degrees. Again, on this, we'll start fairly close to the center. And again, about six inches per second is about what you need. And the uniformity of shrink now is not quite as important as it was on that first shrink, because we've got the initial shrink is established on it. The bulk of the movement of the fabric's already taken place. And again, you can notice here we're only ironing right up to the edges of our patches. We don't want to iron over those. We don't, if we do, we're going to start shrinking these. I'm going to get a real crooked line here. We don't need to uh, shrink this fabric anymore. All of this shrinkage around it will bring everything up to full tension. And as you can see, as we shrink this, our cutouts around here are not being disturbed. They remain really nice. Now we'll go over this wing at this temperature probably two times. Okay, we've finished our shrink at 300. We're back now. The iron's set up to 350. We check the temperature with our little flashpoint temperature gauge. So ultraviolet or uh, infrared unit. At this temperature, it's not uncommon to see what looks like smoke coming off of your fabric. What that is actually, in fact, there's a little bit there. I don't know if you can see it on the film. But what it is, is actually the moisture is cooking out of the fabric at this higher temperature. So that's not, not uncommon. Don't worry about it. Now this is the ironing procedure here at the final shrink at the 350. is really one that's fairly critical. The uh, temperature has to be really uh, fairly accurate. 350 is a good safe temperature. You can actually go up a little higher than that. The problem is if you start trying to go above 350, <clears throat> once you start to approach about 390 to 400 degrees, now you're going to actually, uh, in essence, over shrink the fabric. It's not going to shrink anymore, but the fabric itself starts to lose its memory. And that's one thing that will cause problems and when you, in the cold weather especially, you see some aircraft that develop wrinkles. There's several things contribute to that. One of them is shrinking up to around 400 degrees. Like I say, the fabric starts to lose its memory. Another one is to apply the fabric too loosely. 
and where you have to do a lots of shrinking, you actually shrink it to its maximum shrink capability, and then again, you don't have any memory retention for that to remain tight when it gets real cold. Once I've ironed this, I'll come back and I'll iron it 90 degrees in the opposite direction, and then possibly go back the third time in the same direction again. The idea is to make sure that every square inch of this fabric has been brought up to its final temperature here so everything's stabilized to the same degree. So we'll go ahead and continue ironing and uh, when we get through with that then we'll get into the next stage of the cover.